So, Silvan, we are here at the Open Source Leadership Summit, and it's actually good to see you here, you know. Yes. Uh, so, uh, first of all, before we kind of deep dive into this interview, can you quickly introduce yourself and your project? Yeah, so my name is Sylvain Kalash. Um, I studied software engineering in France, uh, moved to China for a year, and then in 2009 came to the Silicon Valley, where I started my career as a software engineer at SlideShare, uh, which for those who don't know is... I uh, like uh, YouTube, but for PowerPoint. Uh, we got acquired by LinkedIn, um, like in the same years, basically. I stayed uh, there um, during three years as a you know, senior um, software engineer. And um, I created Holberton School two years ago. And I covered Holberton you know, when it was uh, announced and released, and I've been like monitoring the school for, uh, for a very long time. Can you tell us about the school? You know, why did you create a school? Yeah, so as I, um, I told you, you know, I used to be software engineer at mm -hmm. SlideShare, which at the time was a small company, like mm -hmm. only 30 employees. Mm -hmm. uh, and then at LinkedIn, you know, when, uh, you know, there, there are like 10,000 employees. Mm -hmm. And for both companies, um, you know, we were struggling to find talent. You know, mm -hmm. whether it's like kind of uh, full stack talent, like generalists, mm -hmm. um, and um, as well as like, you know, very specialized talent, like for LinkedIn. Um, and my co-founder, um, now co-founder and a friend at the time, Julien Barbier, uh, was seeing the same you know, issue at Docker, where he was head of marketing and community. Mm -hmm. And one thing that struck us is that a lot of candidates mm -hmm. were applying at uh, you know, SlideShare and Docker and LinkedIn and in the industry in general, uh, where you know, graduate from universities and colleges who spend like four or five years studying and not being prepared, you know, to take on the job. Like you could see that they knew stuff, but ultimately they were they didn't have the skills to start working, right? And it would take anywhere from like six months to a year to onboard them and like basically have them up to speed, which sometimes is possible if you have enough senior in your team, but which oftentimes is not possible and you just can't justify to pay someone, you know, uh, you know, for six months or a year just you know to get them up to speed. Um, and we also realize that education is very expensive in the mm -hmm. US. So not only like education, you know, is not getting you ready for a job, but also, uh, you know, it costs you a lot. And so we saw that, you know, there were something to, to do in, in the education, um, you know, um, space. And so we created our job and, and decided to, to start the project. Uh, so how, how, yeah, expense is one reason, you know, one, what other problems did you see, you know, in the education system here that you thought, oh, it should be, something should be done? What other problems were there? Um, yeah, so I think, like, specifically, uh, if you take software engineering, um, I think another issue is the type of people who are getting into it, right? Uh, like, people are often, like, basically, white dude with a beard, pretty much like me, right? Uh, and so, you know, we end up with, um, you know, a talent pool that, you know, very uniform, right? The same type of people uh, building products, which when you think about it is an issue because the product that, you know, companies are building are meant to be used by, you know, the, the world population basically, right? And so if only a specific demographic is building the product, then it won't suit a lot of people. And mm -hmm. that applies for software engineering, but it also applies for, you know, entrepreneurship and I would say like product in general. Um, and so we think that basically um, we need to address this problem by bringing you know, a diverse um, group of software engineers into the industry. And not only visual diversity, you know, I'm not only talking about you know, gender or ethnicity or age, but also walks of life, right? Like people who come from different cultures or different backgrounds or education, uh, ultimately, uh, if you have a diverse group of uh, people, you have like a, like a stronger you know, coverage in terms of like the way of thinking about you know, solving an issue or, or building a product. Um, and, and I think especially in the US where it's, you know, it's a, a country that's quite diverse in so many aspects, like there is a huge potential uh, that should be leveraged. Uh, so how, how differently are you doing it at Holberton? Yeah, so I think we are doing it on, you know, differently on many um, aspects. I would say the first one is communication, mm -hmm. right? Um, so if you go on, you know, um, a coding school website, it's often, you know, blue and dark, uh, kind of like geeky mm -hmm. and tech. And, you know, like it will attract, uh, it will be attractive for a certain type of people, but also for many others it won't be. Um, so for instance, uh, you know, on our website, we try to have, you know, colors and, and you know, a diverse group of um, people, you know, as like, 
kind of role model. Mm -hmm. And speaking of role model, it's also something, you know, we, uh, where I think Holberton is different is that uh, we are partnering with, uh, you know, like, um, like leaders and also celebrities mm -hmm. uh, who are, uh, you know, from different, uni um, like, ethnicity or, um, like, different, um, you know, company and gender and ages. Um, to inspire, you know, like potential candidates to enter the tech industry. Uh, one uh, very quite famous is uh, the songwriter and singer Neo, mm -hmm. uh, who, you know, would like is basically the perfect person to speak to the black African and American community, mm -hmm. uh, which is an uh, underrepresented, um, you know, um, uh, demographic in the tech industry. And I think another thing that Holberton is doing very differently uh, compared to, um, you know, other institutions. Uh, is the way we select uh, the students. <clears throat> so regular education, we look at your past, basically, right? Your academic past, uh, perhaps your professional past. And depending on how you performed, you will be accepted or refused, right? At Holberton, we don't care about your past. We, what we care about is um, your motivation mm -hmm. and your talent. Mm -hmm. So we have a um, fully automated blind application process uh, that is testing for these uh, ab abilities. And then at no point uh, there is humans selecting the, 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 the candidates. By doing this, we make sure that there is no discrimination and there is no human bias. You, you mentioned uh, celebra using celebrities, you know, for that. Um, but when you do, uh, like you gave example of Neo, yeah. and my wife is a huge fan of his work. Uh, how, do you, how do you choose that, okay, this is the right person to, to kind of convey the message that you want to convey? I think we are, and I think it's the community at large. Um, at Alberton, we really, you know, build the school as a community with, like, you know, like the staff, the students, the alumni, and the mentors who are professional working in the industry, and uh, the investors, and also the, the board of trustees uh, where Neo is sitting. And so we want people who are passionate about, you know, education and about technology. Mm -hmm. And and while Neo, you know, is, is not uh, is not a tech dude, right? Uh, he believes that education is key, you know, um, to like uh, b basically a good life. And he knows and he sees that tech, as calling him, uh, changing the world by the second, mm -hmm. right? And he thinks that uh, like basically black people should be part of it. Right. Yeah, I've seen a lot of his videos where he's kind of promoting, you know, that, you know, you should go to school and you should, you know, yeah, that's, 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 that's actually nice. Albert was started almost two years ago, more than two years old. Or, and uh, I think, what, what is the, how long it takes for a course to complete? Yeah, so um, it's two years. Okay, so that means the, is the first batch already out? or? Yeah, the, the first batch is about to be graduated. Mm -hmm. uh, so the curriculum is two years, splitting into three parts. Mm -hmm. The first nine, uh, nine months are dedicated to bringing pretty much anyone with no prior knowledge to a junior um, you know, level. Mm -hmm. Then you have six months internship. Uh, turns out a lot of students are finding job right away. Mm -hmm. uh, some students are starting their companies. Um, and then you have nine months specialization uh, that students can do um, part-time or full-time, uh, depending on their choice. A lot of them choose to keep their job. Um, and uh, the specialization is about diving in the topic of their choice. Uh, and even though, you know, we have the first cohort that just graduated, we already have a lot of students working, as I just mentioned, mm -hmm. um, mostly in Silicon Valley companies, uh, including Apple, Tesla, uh, NVIDIA, LinkedIn, um, IBM, Dropbox, Docker, you name it. Um, so within like a training of nine months, uh, like basically the students are taking jobs uh, that are usually reserved for, you know, Ivy League type of graduates um, by, um, you know, by, I think that's like the learning by doing methodology and the peer learning that makes them great team players, uh, you know, which is attracting these uh, top companies. And, and what, what kind of uh, fee structure is there, you know, how do the students they pay, like upfront, no, did they get loan and pay or how does that work? Yeah, so the mission of Holberton is to bring high quality education to the most. And in the US, you have high quality education. You know, Ivy Leagues, I think, are doing an amazing job. But unfortunately, they are reserved to an elite, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to make everything we can to, uh, you know, remove um, the barriers, virtual barriers to high quality education. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the fact that the application process is fully uh, automated and blind is one of them. Another thing that we did with Julian is that we removed the upfront tuition. 
right? Okay. Uh, which in the US, uh, it's in trillion of dollars, you know, like of student debt loan. Uh, I think only 50% of uh, American are current on their uh, on the payment of a student um, student debt loan. It's like a huge issue. And so we remove the upfront tuition, meaning that the school is free for students until they find a job. Okay. And if they find a job, then they share a percentage of their salary back to the school. How many? 90%? <laughs> Not 90%. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 17%, 17% over three years. Uh, 17% over th per, per month or annual, whatever per it month. is? Okay. Like whenever they work. So if okay. they don't work, then they don't pay. And if they work, then they, they pay. Per so, so, so they can get education, they can find a job, and then they get shared, not for the whole life, but no. you know, for... Uh, and, and what is the fee? I mean, how much is it? So it's 17% of your income. No, I mean, what is the in dollar amount? What is the? Well, it depends on how much you make. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? that's, that's... Which is great because smart. we align their incentive yeah. with our incentive. So there is no flat fee. There, there is, is no flat fee. Yeah, yeah, so if you make less, you pay less. If you make more, you make more. Exactly. Right? That's and a, basically... Like, that's an amazing idea. Like the success of the school is proportional to student success. Oh, exactly. We invest in their education for two years. We pay for everything. Actually, that's a good word. You know, we invested in their education. Yeah, the, yeah that's, that's a neat idea. So basically, we cannot fail at training them. If, mm. we, if we do so, then we close, the, we close it as simple as that. Right. And, and, and uh, what kind of students do you get or what kind of student do you have? Because now you have a whole batch there, you know. So, yeah. so students, it's uh, quite diverse on pretty much any kind of diversity you may, you may think about. Uh, we have students from 18 to 56 years old. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have 35% um, 35 35 women uh, and, and students from all walks of life. Um, so we have you know, teenagers who are out of high school, we have college dropout, we have people who got a master in another major, we have people who were cashier, mm -hmm. we have people who were barista, we have people who were teacher, poker player, guitar player, even one of our students was uh, living in this car, he was homeless. Oh, okay. um, and these students, you know, um, oftentimes were con considered as failure, you know, in the regular yeah. education system, uh, that is, you know, like passive learning, where at Holberton is active learning. And, you know, while they were failing in the regular education system, they are like thriving in, in our methodology. Uh, when you said that the different students come in on a different work life, uh, uh, how do you, I mean, what is the, I want to understand, you know, how do you really educate, uh, do they come and sit in a class or is it online? How does it work? So we have no formal teachers, mm -hmm. we have no lectures, mm -hmm. uh, students learn by practicing, working on projects and collaborating with their peers. No, I mean, that's, let's say I become a student. Yeah. So do I have to come to your school or how do I get my education? Yeah, for the first nine months of mm -hmm. the curriculum, students have to be around the school. On the, on the premise, on the property itself? So most of the, <coughs> most of the day are not mandatory. So okay. you must not come on, on premise. Okay. Uh, but we have days that are uh, mandatory where we orchestrate collaboration mm -hmm. and mock interviews. Um, but then students can come, the school is open 24 hours 7. They mm -hmm. can come in and out whenever they want. Okay. Uh, what, like the goal is basically they have project and a deadline and that will make it happen. Okay. So they can manage their time, work whenever they want, and uh, you know, it, like get them to be um, self-disciplined mm -hmm. uh, and learn about time management. And um, you know, I think that usually managers hate to micromanage. Our students are not the type of individual that you know you need to micromanage. Uh, so, so that means that students are only limited to the, the, the region, or you have schools in different places, or there's just one school for now. So currently, we, are, uh, we have only one location in San Francisco, but mm -hmm. we are looking forward to ex expanding mm -hmm. uh, this year, mm -hmm. at least one location. Mm -hmm. uh, what's great with this methodology is that the quality of the education doesn't re rely on something that is not scalable, right? right? So we rely on software and community, exactly. which uh, yeah. are both scalable. And so we have a lot of uh, inbound leads um, you know, from governments, cities, companies, um, real estate owner and uh, wealthy people who are reaching out to us and who want to you know, open a Holberton school in their area uh, because they, look f they are looking for talent mm -hmm. and cannot find them. And uh, oftentimes, like, just because there is people who want to work, there is work, uh, you know, like uh, unfilled jobs, but there is not the missing piece, which is accessible and high quality education. Mm -hmm. And if you take the US only for software engineering only, because I believe Holberton school is not 
ultimately not only about software engineering, but if we focus on software engineering today, there is more than half a million unfilled positions that, that require some tech skills. So it, it doesn't mean that you all need to have like, you know, like to be like skilled enough to be working at Google, right? Like not everybody is Google, right? But software is everywhere now, you know, like in retail, in transportation, in bank, um, in finance, uh, it's all over the place, right? And in certain capacity, today's company needs to have, you know, worker who, who somehow know, know how to, you know, interact with um, te technology, right? Right. Um, and and I, t I think that I believe that learning by doing uh, is something that we've done for, you know, centuries or thousands That's of years. That's how we learn it. That's how we, right? Yeah. And I think today we prove that you don't need to go n to like MIT or Stanford to end up at NASA or at Tesla. Right. And that learning by doing is, you know, as efficient as, you know, learning by listening. Well, I was talking to Cheryl Chamberlain from Linux Foundation yesterday. Uh, she, she's in a... Like, Super superhero of the AI world, and one point she mentioned was that uh, the education process, how AI can help, you know, in the education process. One thing that I notice is that uh, as a journalist, I see uh, so much is changing. New technologies are introduced, you know, on monthly basis. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't even know if the traditional education system, you know, where what you learned today was developed 20 years ago. Uh, so. <laughs> so uh, as you look at a container space and microservice, everything is becoming agile. So don't you think that the, our current education system is actually, especially in the technology space, it's not even designed to cater to what is happening, it's totally disconnected? Yeah, I agree. I, I believe that today education system was suited for the last industri industrial revolution where we, wanted, we were bringing people for, from the rural area into the cities so that they can work on assembly line. And on assembly line, you need to come on time, you need to listen to the manager, you need to stay put, not, not speak to, you know, your yeah, the people on the side, and you need to basically like follow the instruction, right? Mm -hmm. But to like a robot, like movie. a robot, basically, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And and I think like all the education is training people to be robots. Mm -hmm. But turns out now we are building robots, and they are better at, at being robots, you know, than human, right? Mm -hmm. So I think our education should be at the opposite of like we should we should be, make sure that we are not training human to to have like robots kind of skills, right? We need to teach. Uh, people to develop their creativity, problem-solving skills, um, and also basically learning how to learn, right? As you said, like you have a constant flow of new technology, new tools coming up, and you cannot predict, you know, what's going to be the hottest, you know, tool or technology that you need to, to know to have a job, right? So that's why at Holberton, we, not, we don't necessarily focus on specific tools, but we want students to have the foundation that they can build upon, but also we want them to develop this ability to learn by themselves, right? So that even after they uh, graduate Holbert and they go in company, they continue to learn. And if one day, and I believe this will happen, software engineering is like kind of a day job, or at least very different from one we, we know it today. They can evolve to whatever is needed you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in the tech industry. And perhaps this will be training and managing the AI that is going to do the coding right. Right, for the company. Right. Uh, when you do mention that, you know, uh, the robots, it's more like, you know, for the traditional jobs, you know, coal miners or whatever, it's more like using your body as a tool, you know, instead of using a tool, you, know, you go and sit there and take risks. But uh, are there enough, like, uh, jobs for people? Because, you know, a lot of, when you see the unemployment is there, so people do try to go back to the job. So what are the new jobs that you see will, if, if people, is, if robots come and AI come and take over all those jobs, mm -hmm. what kind of jobs, new jobs are there or will yeah. be there? I think like basically robots and AI and automation, however you want to name it, mm -hmm. is very good at uh, basically, if you, are, if you can have a, basically solve a problem and you have a recipe for it, then you can give it to a robot or something like this. If solving something requires a high level of creativity, all the time. And problem solving, something mm -hmm. that's different all the time, exactly. Mm -hmm. Then we are far from being able to develop AI and automation that's good at this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think there is a lot of room for humans to still have jobs. And actually what's great with automation and mm -hmm. AI is that it takes, like it takes care of the boring task, mm -hmm. automation, right? Like that's, yes. like you d basically you would like humans to focus on more interesting problems, right? Mm -hmm. Like how do we deal with climate change? How do we 
uh, you know, become, uh, you know, um, a, a race of, you know, multi-planet, mm -hmm. you know, colonizing other planets right. and sustaining, you know, the, the population growth and so on. Like, I think we, there is a lot of, of challenges and important issue we have no clue how to solve, right? Right. So we'd rather let the robot do the, the boring stuff and human, uh, you know, focus on the interesting thing. But this will only happen if we, if we can train our you know, population, yeah. citizen, to have the, the ability to tackle this issue, right? Mm -hmm. So we should not train people to do what robot can, but we should train people to be creative. Right, and, and, and you know, uh, if, if you want to build an economy which is based on, you know, future-looking jobs, that's the kind of jobs you will have, you know? Uh, going to space, what Elon Musk is planning, you know, mm -hmm. going to colonize other planets, or, you know, I mean, the way I, since I'm here, there's so much dearth of, you know, people, there is, we, they need so many people, mm -hmm. and they're not enough people. So mm -hmm. there is so much demand, yeah. and you know, and with this kind of new, uh, with, with the new problem, you also need new ap approach towards the solution. And I think that's it. anything else that you think we should have touched upon. Well, I think we talk, talked about a very broad set of topics today. Uh, yeah, we did. Um, I mean, I think like if you know, like there are uh, folks who attended today's uh, you know uh, um, open source summit. Mm -hmm. um, who are listening to this video, I know there is a lot of, uh, you know, like leaders and, you know, top executive and manager. And you just said they are like all looking for talent. Mm -hmm. I'd like them to uh, take a second and think about widening um, like the scope of uh, the way they, you know, recruit talent and maybe not focus as much on, on the um, kind of like diploma side, but more on the skill side. Mm -hmm. um, I think that today, like a lot of company, and especially in the Silicon Valley, like kind of when pass through this, like, hey, if you don't mm -hmm. have a four-year degree, mm -hmm. then you are worth nothing. But mm -hmm. I think a lot of companies are still in this, hey, if you don't have a four-year degree, then I won't even look at your resume. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that the current um, uh, Secretary of Education, mm -hmm. Betty Devos, is really into you know, traditional public education is great, but I think that as we have, you know, we, are, we have a diversity of different learners, we need to have a diversity of, you know, pathway to get an education, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that company should also, um, like ultimately this diverse education will only thrive if at the end companies are willing to hire mm -hmm. you know, them, right? Mm -hmm. And I think they need, and I think today we arrive at, at the limit of what the system can do. And we see that traditional education doesn't scale and follow uh, you know, like as quickly the trends that the company are, are you know, are following themselves, right? Uh, and I think alt alternative model uh, and Alberton is among other, right? Are, are more studied for, for this. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was a great, you know, it was a great talking to you again. Thank